Welcome to day three of the 13 days of Halloween with me, your host, Eddie Spaghetti. Over the next couple days leading up to Halloween, I'm going to be talking about my favorite picks for stuff to watch around this spooky time of year, be it film, TV shows, or even TV specials. Anything that I think you guys might be interested in checking out if you haven't seen it before. So with that, let's get on to my third pick. Twilight Zone, Monsters Are Due on Maple Street, 1960, directed by Ronald Winston, written by Rod Serling, starring Claude Atkins, Barry Atwater, and Jack Weston. Here's an episode about what happens when shit goes crazy on an average suburban street. Full of white people, no doubt. There's a power outage, and it just creates chaos for people. There's mechanical issues, there's electrical issues, etc. People go fucking nuts. And then it gets to the point where they start to speculate about what's going on. They start thinking, oh, it's it could be this, and it could be that, it could be the Russians, etc. And then all these theories start to kind of develop, and people start to think, well, maybe it's more than that, maybe it's this, or maybe it's that. And it gets to a boiling point. I'm not gonna ruin what happens, but it gets to a boiling point. And it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's brilliantly done, but very, very simple. And essentially, it's just about what happens when we're put in a situation we have no control over. What do we do? Do we act civilized? Do we work together in trying to form an answer? Or do we start to turn on each other and kind of go for the every man for himself kind of deal? Like there's a seclusion kind of element to it. And it's really neat how Rod Serling essentially kind of thought, oh, there's a cul-de-sac. You know, I could have like this cul-de-sac essentially that are gonna go at it because they don't really have the answers as to what the fuck is going on. There is a way that they kind of explain why they can't really go out of the street exactly. It's really kind of, without spoiling anything, it basically kind of goes towards the amount of fear that everybody has and how they don't even want to risk leaving their home, their homes. So this came out around the Cold War, so there's a lot of kind of stuff that kind of relates to that in a sense, a lot of themes and tones and there's metaphors towards that sort of thing whether or not it's the Russians who are doing this or that sort of deal. Twilight Zone was very heavy on that sort of shit back in the day, um, but it's very cleverly done. It's not really done just blatantly where it's like, it's Russia, they're doing all this sort of shit, you know? The coolest thing about it though is the fact that we can relate to it a lot easier now because of technology, our dependence on technology. In this episode, set in 1960 essentially, maybe the past 10 years worth, they were still evolving in technology they were just getting used to it so the concept of like losing your tv set wouldn't seem to be a huge deal like they would switch on a radio like whatever we still have a form of communication whereas nowadays we lose you know the wi-fi goes out it's over best thing about this i love is the fact that it's so simple it is such a simple simple story it's about a fucking street in suburbia but it's creepy. Uh, they turn that street into something fucking scary, which is very, very, very hard to do. And uh, that's not easy to do because so many people associate suburbia and, you know, t rows of homes with like cut lawns and barbecues and stuff like that. Nothing really bad goes on. Like once in a while, somebody gets drunk and tries to fight their neighbor. Twilight Zone did a really good job of using situations where it was involving suburbia, getting closer to people's homes, where they're actually watching the show from, encroaching onto those types of areas, getting under people's skin, and really reminding them that, listen, you might feel that you're safe, but you're not. And something could be behind that door in the dark, and you have no idea. But you would if you entered the Twilight Zone. So obviously this one, like a lot of people watching this, I bet, who have seen at least a couple Twilight Zone episodes or you're like a fanatic of it. I came across this one on a Twilight Zone kick. I started watching the show. I was deeply, deeply invested in it. I thought this is like the best fucking idea for a series ever. Like an anthology series, yeah, I get that. But <laughs> how they're all different and how like nobody's safe and the twists obviously are the biggest thing about these it's like you know it's like sex almost it's that fucking good when you get that twist and you just kind of get this ah <sighs> that was good anyways the thing is is that I, I was on a kick and i came across this one and this one stuck with me it's a story that is very surprisingly powerful for how simplistic it is but how crazy it gets how it starts so, so simple and so calm and easy, and it could be something that could easily be just ignored, 
or like wait it out. These people can wait out the fucking power outage, but nope. Ain't gonna happen, the Wi Fi is out, we gotta do fucking something about that. The monsters are due on Maple Street. Perhaps you are gonna be due on Maple Street if you go and check this episode of The Twilight Zone out. I still think that it's one of the best ones of the series. It's very simplistic, but yet powerful, and that says a lot. So definitely give it a whirl. Well, that's it for this episode of the 13 Days of Halloween. Please join me for the next couple of days coming up leading up to Halloween, as I got lots more to share of my favorite movies and TV shows and TV specials that I think work perfectly around this time of year. Until then, we'll do lunch.